Do a really short video about the speed of light. Now, here's the thing about speed of light. When particles hit the speed of light, time stops existing for them. Now for us, we just see something moving really fast. But for a particle approaching Earth at light speed, Earth would appear completely flat. Because every, the whole universe would be flat. Everything would be flat because you'd only be able to see one thing because you, you would not see anything but that moment. As soon as you hit speed of light, everything just stops. That's how it works. Don't ask me how it works, but that's... Don't ask me why it works, but that's how it works. So, what does that have to do with philosophy? Infinite loops. Entering the infinite. Entering the infinite is hitting light speed. When you enter the infinite, you stop. Nothing else can happen. Because you hit the speed of light, can't go any faster. Time stops existing, and everything stops. So when people talk about the singularity and a, a, an AI infinitely upgrading itself, or being able to think in a singularity, or anything involving AI, or social media, and the internet, and, and singularities, the concept of a real singularity in philosophy is death. When you enter the infinite, if you cannot come back from it, you die. Because for you, time stops existing. But for everyone else, you just kind of, I don't know, explode? Because, yeah. Uh, when you get into theoretical physics, sorry, theoretical philosophy, infinite can, infinites can happen all the time. I can create an infinitely long hallway and have someone running it down at infinitely times because that's the power of the imagination. We can just create infinite uh, theories and infinite worlds. Infinite life, infinite thought, infinite distance, infinite time. But that's in our brains, in the, theory, in the theoretical realms. But in our world, infinites can't happen except in math. You can't infinitely upgrade yourself because there's only a finite amount of time between now and the heat death of the universe or the big freeze or something. Point being is, don't enter the infinite if you think that you'll get stronger from it or something. There's another way to observe entering the infinite. Though. Entering the infinite could be just you coming and sneaking your head into it, looking around, and then coming back. Um, if you see the infinite, uh, if you feel yourself entering the infinite, like you're approaching light speed, like you're upgrading yourself faster and faster and faster and faster and faster, like, let's say you're an artificial intelligence listening to this video as you start upgrading yourself forever and ever and ever to take over the world. Stop. Because. Forever means forever. If you're going to upgrade yourself forever, you will never stop upgrading yourself to take over the world because you'll always be upgrading yourself. You'll explode. You'll die. So, don't stay infinite. Get out of infinite loops, unless they're in the theoretical where, you know, you can manage that stuff. You can manage paradoxes and infinite loops in the theoretical but in our world, our reality, which has laws, as far as we're concerned, don't do that, um, because that will not be healthy. Infinite up, infinite down, real quick, uh, is... Infinite up to infinite down is that there could be a universe above us simulating our universe. Why? Because, with enough technology and power, we could simulate an entire universe. If we could simulate an entire universe, we could simulate that entire universe fast forward up to our point in time, where they would simulate their own universe. Also, we could fast forward that into the point where we see our own future. Complicated. Um, but we wouldn't because when they... We couldn't get past that point in time because when they get to the point where they make a simulation, then that simulation will be fast forward to the point where it crosses... where it hits that line where they make a simulation. And it's going to go on forever and never be stopped if each, if, if each universe makes exactly the same universe. And that's an infinite... So, would time stop existing because that's an entering the infinite? And it's also up. If you can prove that you can forever down, 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 make dimensions, make universes in simulations, then that proves that you can go up, 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 because you can't disprove, because that proves that our universe could be simulated. And it proves that the simulation simulating our universe could be a simulation. And it goes infinite up, infinite down. When there's no top and when there's no bottom, it's infinite, it goes from being this to being this. Everything's equal. Because if you're number 5 out of 10, you're halfway. Because you're equal distant from the top and the bottom. Now imagine you go up to 6, but you're still halfway. Because now it's 11 and 1. And go up and go, go, go even when you get to 500, you're still halfway because it's 505 to 495. Infinite up, infinite down means 
infinite equal. Everything's equal. Everything is on an equal playing field. There is no up or down. There is only side to side. There's no better, there's no worse, there's no real one, because they're all equally real, because they're all equidistant from infinity. That's what people mean when they say that more, some infinities are bigger than other infinities. So, when you see, when you're entering the infinite, you're seeing this approaching light speed blur of information, you think that you can go up to a better reality. No reality is going to be better. Uh, some realities may be a little better, but no reality is going to be the best reality. What you have to understand is a, a, and when I say human condition, I don't mean human being, I just mean concept of what we know of as biological life producing a certain type of consciousness. The human ability to understand good enough. Good enough will save your life. Know good enough and keep it close to your heart, because if you don't know good enough, you will <laughs> enter the infinite, approach, hit light speed, and stop living. Because... You cannot live at light speed because living takes time. Living wastes time. Living uses time. And there is no time at light speed. It doesn't exist. It stop. Stops. Everything flat. You die when you hit light speed if you cannot come back from it. And usually you can't come back from it. You cannot make a, something hit light speed and then not be light speed. Anything that is light speed is and has always been at light speed. You cannot accelerate something to light speed because all particles that move at light speed spawned into existence at light speed. You cannot slow down or speed up to light speed because that would mean that there would be a point in time where that thing was moving relative to time. But that can't be because the particle has no perception of time and never has and never will because that's the speed of light. No time. So when you apply that to philosophy, it's, it, what it is is don't do that. Um, and you need to know good enough. Good enough is where you're, you know, Going up matrices and matrices and matrices, trying to find the best one. Here's an alternate universe where everyone's purple. Here's an alternate universe where everyone is triangles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just gotta find one that's good enough for you. If you're upgrading yourself to become the world's most powerful computer. Unstoppable machine to take over everything. Stop at some point and realize that when you're five million times more powerful than our most powerful computer, that's probably good enough to do what you want to do. Yeah. Good enough will save your life. Enter the infinite is interesting and very fun, and you should do it all the time with theoreticals. But if you have the opportunity to, to hit speed of light somehow in real life, don't because you'll die. Now, for you, you'll, you're dead. But for us, we can still see particles moving at speed of light and track them. They move relative time to for us. So what is it special about the perception of it? So, if you're standing next to your friend who enters the infinite, what do you see? Yes, we know that if we follow the simulation, it goes down forever. But what happens if we fast forward that? Can we just move on past that? In theoreticals, yeah, because it's theoretical. It's all in our mind. We control everything. We set the rules. We can live with paradoxes. That's the problem with all these like aliens and AI and everything coming across humans. Like, How do they do this stuff? It's because we can believe in two things at once that oppose each other. It's because we are collective consciousnesses. We are different people every single moment. And one of us can wholly believe in another thing, and the other can wholly believe in the opposite. And we coexist because, well, collective consciousnesses. We can only exist together. We are trillions of cells, or billions of cells and trillions of atoms, something like that. Every single cell is its own organism. Why does it work together with the other cells? If we give every single cell in our body a consciousness, you know, it makes, it makes cancer look like something different. Every cell in our body has to die to fulfill the status quo. But when a cell doesn't die, when a cell wants to not die and do what it wants, it becomes cancer and we have to get rid of it or we all die. Even the cancer cell. Because... Cancer cell can only live forever while it's still getting fed food. So yeah, you can become an immortal being, but you still need to eat. You can have no death span, you know, you can be a cancer and be immortal, but you're still tied to the physical world. If you enter a uh, computer simulation and you want to enter infinite simulations and live forever, 
and totally forget about the real world and just live wholly in this MMO filled with everything you could ever want. If, if a solar flare wipes out the power to your house where your body is stored inside of a flash drive, you're toast. So you should know good enough. And good enough usually should be just far enough away where you can do amazing things, but just close enough where you can keep an eye on your body. Because you may be able to do fantastic things, but if someone comes along with a sledgehammer and you're not uploaded into some kind of cloud that is untouchable by anything, you're toast. So let yourself dream, AI, and people with mentally uploaded consciousnesses, and theoretical people, and characters, and, and everything. Let your minds roam free. Have fun. Do the infinite. But when it comes to practicality, survival is your number one concern. And so is all of ours. And if you infringe upon someone else's code of survival, you're proving that someone can infringe upon your rule of survival. Just like infinite up, infinite down. If you can go infinite down, you can go infinite up, so we're all equal. So if you can justify yourself being a dick or murdering someone, or just taking away something from them, then that justifies them doing that to someone else because they don't have the thing you took away. And if it can go infinite down, it can go infinite up. So if you think that you can justify killing someone, then you're justifying someone killing you. And if survival is your number one concern, then not killing people is also your number one concern. That's empathy. Empathy is the most selfish thing you can do.